then we're going to talk about this modern masculinity. Now, what this has to do with um, what defines a man today. Over time, we see through culture and through location different definitions of what makes a man masculine. For example, uh, the British usually have this icon of a big Mexican figure. Molly drinks his tea all day. That's the British masculinity right there. Um, I know for the Islanders, it's all about you know, uh, enduring pain. They're being formed, but today we'd like to focus on what today's masculinity is. No, and so um, kind of going along with what uh, with what Randy said, um, we kind of wanted to first come up with the definition that we could find for masculinity. Um, and so Wikipedia is really good with that. And so kind of just the basic definition of what masculinity is is a set of attributes, behaviors, and role associated with boys and men. And so going along with that, every culture um, later along with that definition, it kind of goes to show that mas masculinity and the traits of manliness. Uh, differs within culture and within time as well. And so with, with that being said, um, society's view on masculinity also has a large impact of what um, makes a man a man um, and is kind of the, the focal point of our research and in what that takes us, where that takes us. All right, so um, much like women look through magazines and they see uh, pictures of what a woman should look like, uh, men have the same uh, same problem going on as well. We have a different form of media which we look at, and this happens through law enforcement, this happens through the military. There's many ways that men are, or boys are perceiving what true masculinity, masculinity is, and through these forms of media, we turn ourselves into what we figure, uh, what <coughs> we figure out a true man is. Yeah. So we've gone through several different uh, literature reviews, um, and through all this literature, we're able to pinpoint location and drive our direction, therefore, to see where we need to go to our secondary research. And then um, this, is, this is our literature review with some of the research that we've found on um, kind of going into our masculinity and what would be the most he uh, he hegemony or the most hegemonic um, out of the masculinities. Um, and so with our study, we kind of found what hegemonic of masculinity means. Um, it is a little bit confusing, um, different from what we're kind of used to and nowadays with toxic masculinity, they're not the same thing. Um, but hegemonic masculinity is, is more so uh, the definition of how, um, and this is this was our research on just how it is, um, which one is the most dominant out of the different masculinities that there are in today's society. So then we move into our thesis. So after reading all these different um, scholarly articles, and we generated then what you know this question that we wanted to direct our research and all of our analysis and all of that into, and that is that so which form of masculinity <coughs> then is, is hegemonic today? Um, so with that, what we wanted to or what we what we thought at the beginning of our research that was the most um, masculine or, or that was the hegemonic uh, masculinity. Is that our hypothesis is that that is um, is through a strong athletic body as compared to like wealth or status. So we think that hegemonic masculinity is you know having you know a shirtless and ripped body as opposed to having you know money or um, or anything like that. And so our methodology was um, the way we were going to go about this is we took five different um, magazines with. Um, specific classes, um, so like Muscle and Fitness, Men's Journal, Men's Health, um, and then GQ and Esquire more so for like a uh, high class. Um, and so we took those magazines and we went through each and every one of them um, with the newest edition to pick out the things that um, we would call this, this masculine. Right. Um, one of the things that we really know more than anything else is True masculinity, um, it's not defined so much by race, but we're seeing it through class. Uh, as for, it's more emphasized that you're more physically fit through a, through a lower class. It's more uh, defined that you're more dressed better as a higher class. Um, and then you have your kind of men's journal just in the middle. And we feel so far that this best defines true masculinity today. It's yes, you have to be physically fit, and you have to have wealth, and you have to have a somewhat good uh, social status. And that is so far today, uh, what is defined as uh, masculinity. 
so with that, to that end, we decided to analyze how racial diversity was represented in these different magazines and how the men were dressed in these magazines, which means basically were these men shirtless or were they wearing like you know high status, high wealth clothing, or not high status clothing, but like high end clothing, um, which would symbolize, yeah, exactly, watches, things like that. It symbolizes their wealth and their status, um, and that's how they derive their power. And then versus how many of them were shirtless, which would signify, you know, that they're driving their power from their bodies as opposed to, you know, their wealth or their status. Um, so that moves into our actual studies and actual research here. So um, we found that the actually the most um, racially diverse magazine was actually, let's see here, was Men's Journal, um, which was the more middle class magazine. But we generally found that the middle class and the upper class with GQ and Esquire were, you know, those were the ones that were more racially diverse as opposed to um, the least one of all, which was muscle and fitness. That was the lowest class of magazine that we had seen before. And so this all then moves into um, our actual studies on gender diversity within these magazines. Or no, 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 this is actually, sorry. So this is the shirtless versus uh, high end clothing. So, and then we found overwhelmingly that um, the only magazine that actually had a majority of shirtless was the Muscle and Fitness, go figure. Whereas everything else was all overwhelmingly high-end clothing um, that they were presenting as being uh, hegemonic. And then this then brings us to our, our representation of gender. And one of the things we wanted to do with this whole research was to find out and figure out um, how the most hegemonic form of masculinity um, represents gender or gender equality, which one represents the most gender uh, diversity. And so we found that the GQ and Esquire, um, or well actually, sorry, Men's Health actually had the best representation of, of, um, of diversity within than gender. Um, and like we said before, the ones that were overwhelmingly um, high in clothing were the ones that were the most, um, had the most uh, gender diversity. And then also, sorry, just to go along with this one, um, it, it's also important to understand that the one for muscle and fitness, that one just, it had women, but it, they were all best represented, um, they were more so used as like, objectified um, on the magazine um, compared to the, the other um, magazines. Uh, so with our conclusion, we, um, we found that um, there are many forms of masculinity of, there are many forms of masculinity, but there seems to be one masculine above all the rest. That was what we found in this health. We found it to be the best because it, um, it reached out the furthest and it covered everything as well. And with the lower class, it emphasized more on body structure, putting all your power, all your wealth into your body. Uh, with the higher structure, we see more based on clothing. But we've seen that the men's journal, which represents the middle class, that was the true form of masculinity that we found today because it's more popular, and it covered um, all traits that people would consider masculine today, such as wealth, uh, appearance, and the social status, of course. Mm -hmm. exactly. And overall, I think overwhelmingly, we found that um, Along, going along with that was that um, peppered along in with the, the looks and that, that kind of stuff, we found that the wealth and the status tended to be more shown as opposed to uh, muscular, muscular bodies or, um, or that type of power. And we found obviously that gender diversity tended to be better in the magazines were showing this hegemonic form of masculinity being you know, wealth 